I think we are good to go. So good morning, everyone. So thank you for joining us today. So today we have uh, Miss Julieta Castro with us. So she is a 21-year-old female. She is from Mexico. She is presently doing her graduation in uh, uh, engineering innovation. So that's a very good from her side for for her to join with us and share a few of her experiences because scoliosis is not only something which affects us physically. But it also takes a lot of mental strength and a lot of coping strategies. What one needs to take up to get a better outcome in life as well. So that's why we have organized a short session with Julieta Castro. Okay, so she would be sharing her uh, personal experiences and how she had developed some positive coping strategies to overcome it. So a few things before we start the session. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, you can put up in the chat box, which we'll take up later during the end of the session, and. Uh, so you are very well okay to be more interactive at the end okay so thank you very much everybody for joining so now over to julieta you can start it up thank you um welcome as as josh said i'm julieta i'm 21 years old and i'm from mexico and i have scoliosis and today i will tell you a little bit about my story living with this condition and how it has affected my mental health and my body image. Um, about a month ago, I started a blog called scoliosismexico.com. And with this blog, I also started um, an Instagram account. And that's how Josh found me and contacted me. Okay, so for my background, um, my Scoliosis journey started about six years ago when I was 15 and I noticed an asymmetry on my waist. So that led to an, a doctor's appointment. And in the doctor's appointment, he told me I might have scoliosis, so I needed to get an x-ray. Then I got an x-ray and these were the results. I actually have a 40 to 50 degree curve on my on the lumbar part of my spine. And before having this diagnosis, I had never heard about scoliosis. So I was really scared because I was now faced with the, with the possibility of getting surgery and scoliosis surgery is really invasive. So it was really scary for me. Um, then the following months, I visited countless doctors and some of them told me I had to get surgery and some of the, them told me I could get away with only physical therapy. So I started getting different treatments. I went to a physical therapist in my city and it began to be part of my routine since I went there like twice a week and then i went to another physical therapist that was in mexico city and i'm not from mexico city so i had to travel there and i went there almost every weekend and so that was really um I, I didn't like going there because I thought I felt like I was missing missing my my social life because I couldn't be home on the weekends. Then I went to get treatment to Panama. I skipped school for two weeks and I traveled to Panama with my dad. And the treatment there was really exhausting physically and mentally. It was really painful and um, it, was, there, it was a really hard couple of weeks. Then finally, about two years ago, I went to get treatment to London. Um, I was there for about a month. And even though the therapy was really exhausting because it was almost the whole day, I really liked going there. I 
London is my favorite city, so I really enjoyed the stay. And actually, my sister went there with me, so I really liked it. Now that you know a little bit about my background with scoliosis, I will tell you um, how this condition affected my body image. I think growing up um, is really hard for any teenager. Um, and growing up with these unreachable beauty standards, it's really hard for anyone. But I think when you have scoliosis, it is harder. And one of the reasons I started my blog was the fact that I grew up thinking that my body was weird because it wasn't what the ideal bo body that was presented on the media. And I think representation is really important because um, I had never seen my body presented as beautiful. And that's what, that's what I want to do with my blog. I want people to see it and see there's, there's people that have their, their same body and that embrace it. Since I think representation is such a key is such a key factor in self love, I think we should be really careful about who we follow on social media and the kind of content we consume. Six years ago, I thought I couldn't take anything positive out of this experience. But now, six years later, I can tell you scoliosis completely shaped my character and it taught me a lot of things. One of the things it taught me is, was not to take my health for granted. Because when I was 15 years old, I was a normal 15 year old. I had pretty good health and I didn't see how fragile health is and how we should be grateful for every day we get to live because it can change any day. Then it also showed me how much people around me love me. In the past six years, I have never felt more loved and supported because um, Throughout all this journey, my parents, my sisters, my friends, and all the people surrounding me have been by my side through everything. And that is a, an, also a, a really good lesson Scoliosis taught me. It also taught me to focus on important things. I used to be really insecure about my body and I will pick on every flaw I had. But after getting this di diagnosis, I think that when you're faced with the possibility of your body not working how it always has worked, really every physical flaw becomes irrelevant. So it really, taught me not to get upset about the small things and focus on the important things. And finally, it told me how strong I am because I could get through all of this and now I even have a blog about it. And back then I, I wouldn't have thought someday I would be able to share my story and maybe help other people. So it, it really, I think it really made me stronger. If I could write a letter to my 15 year old self, I will tell her that she is really strong and that she can handle everything that comes her way. I will tell her I understand that the therapies can be really exhausting and even painful, but, and I understand that she wants to live a normal life like all her friends, but I will also tell her, um, sorry, 
that her 20 year old self is really grateful and proud of her. And I will thank, for, thank her for her strength. And I will also tell her that in the end, it's all going to be worth it. Even if at that moment, it seems really hard, she can get through it. Now I'm going to share with you my top five tips to, that I have learned through scoliosis to love my body. The first one is do not compare yourself. Everybody is different and we all have different bodies and that's what makes us special. Even though it sounds really cliche, we can compare ourselves to our sister, our friend, our neighbor, our favorite, favorite actress, because we have different bodies and they are equally as beautiful. They're just different. Two, get out of your comfort zone. One of the biggest steps in my self-love journey began only about a month ago when I started my blog because I had to take pictures of my bare back and I had never done that before. I used to be really insecure about my back. So stepping out of my comfort zone really empowered me and and showed me that even my asymmetric back is beautiful. Number three, take care of your body. Eat well, exercise, and stay flexible. I think that throughout the years, I, I have realized that what helps me the most, what helps me love my body the most is is doing things like I already love it. I don't know if that is clear, but this is something you can only do because even if you go to the best therapist in the world and if you go to the best nutritionist or the best psychologist, if you don't do an effort yourself to take care of your body, it isn't going to do anything. Number four. Look for inspiration in other people with scoliosis. Social media can be a huge way to connect with other people. Um, just search accounts um, with uh, accounts, scoliosis accounts, and you will see there's a huge support network um, that is willing to hear what you have to say they share their stories or you can even ask questions and i had never searched scolio an instagram accounts about scoliosis before but now that i have a blog i i have seen it really is a huge support network number five focus on what you can do I think this is really important because when I changed when I changed my perspective I started looking on I started focusing on the things I could do and not the things I couldn't because of my scoliosis like I can sing I can dance I can swim I can be with my friends I can be with my family and all of that is because of my body, and I should be grateful for that every day. One extra tip that I didn't include here is to write down how you feel. This really helps, has helped my self-love journey because I think writing makes you understand your thoughts a lot more, and it can guide you on what you should work on. Now, for the I now, I know um, the people around us also is affected by scoliosis, and I know it can be really hard for our friends and our family. But I know it can be especially hard for our parents. 
Um, for the parents, I will say that the best thing you can do for your child is be by their side and be inform yourself about this condition and acknowledge is not it it isn't only a physical condition but it's also a mental challenge and also be really patient because when i was younger i used to beg my parents to let me skip my therapies and now i understand it was be it, they my parents wanted the best for me but at the time it was really hard to see it that way and i know it can be really scary for you too for the parents but believe me scoliosis was one of the things that made me bond with my parents the most and scoliosis made our relationship grow so much Mm. Okay, so in conclusion, I want to say that I know growing up with scoliosis can be really hard. And I know going to therapy every week isn't very fun. But I think we should all acknowledge that getting treatment is a privilege. And many people don't have that privilege so be grateful that you get a chance to get better and even if growing up with scoliosis was hard for me it taught me so much and i really wouldn't change a thing remember that we learn the most from the obstacles life sends our way sends our way we get stronger more mature we get different perspectives on life and we learn a lot about ourselves. So that's it. I don't know if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Julieta, for that wonderful presentation. Thank you. I think it had, you. Uh, uh, from your perspective, what you're told is really what is needed of the hour for most of the, uh, uh, for the girls and also for the parents as well. Now we are open for questions. So if anybody has any other questions specifically to ask 